Here's some stuff that I just recently finished. This is a rack that I made for uh, my reduced shank drills, and it's just made out of a two by twelve from a hard or from a lumber yard. And then I ran it through my dad's planer to kind of clean it up and cleaned up the edges, and then uh, chamfered the corners just like on a miter saw, and then I ran a block plane around the edges to just kind of take the edge off. And then there's um, I don't know, some little risers that are. Uh, screwed and glued to the bottom of it to just kind of rise it up and then they're chamfered so if you have to slide it or whatever it slides pretty nice and then I just put some uh, you know cheap handles from the hardware store in it also so you can pick it up and you know, I've got a little bit of storage on it for excess uh, ER32 collets um, kind of a deal for setting a vise on um, it's got a slot in it for the sign keys to drop through and fit flat and I don't know, it's just to kind of rise it up, and it, it was built using the same construction techniques as the reduced shank drill rack. You know, nothing really special. On this reduced shank drill rack, um, all of the holes that the drill sit in are 17 30 seconds diameter, and then I glued a, a piece of masonite on the bottom to keep the drills from falling through, and then. All the holes that the ER32 collets sit in it were just drilled with a inch and a quarter of Forstner bit. I've been storing all my waste oil in these gas cans, which I'm sure probably isn't the proper container for it. I need to probably relabel them for waste oil. But the biggest thing with them is I bought, um, I was able to find the spout that you see on it. The spouts that they come with are just absolutely worthless. And, I, and you can thank the state of California for that because of all their gay laws, they have to have these really ridiculous, shitty our uh, pouring spouts so anyways I was able to find these uh, better ones online um, they you know, actually pour and I know they're, they're not impossible to use this is kind of a new storage technique I've been using on for my drawers lately and um, there's actually these inexpensive plastic containers and they kind of I don't have I don't know, clips or whatever you want to call it to kind of hold them together and you can get these from you know, uh, Walmart, or um, I actually got them from my hardware store. And then, in order to keep everything from sliding all over the place, I've got a piece of masonite in the bottom of it. And I don't know if you can see, but I've got pieces of aluminum channel that have been riveted in place. There's another one there, and that just keeps everything from sliding around. And it, it seems to work pretty good as far as organizing a drawer. You know, the aluminum channel keeps things from moving, and then, you know, these small bins, which are relatively inexpensive. This is how I store a lot of my extra tool holders and all this is just a shelf and then I just used um, a knockout um, um, I'm Trying to think that you know you can buy that from the hardware store actually you might have to go to like an electrical uh, Supply outfit and then they just have these rubber grommets that are you know to protect wires when you're in the wires to the hole And if they're actually the perfect perfect size for a uh, 40 taper tool holder and all, all the drawers that you'll see that I've added to my workbenches are all made by a company called Stackbin. And you can get them from McMaster Car. Um, and, and they're, you know, they're a pretty decent drawer. You know, they got ball bearing drawer slides and they're made out of real steel and they have a lock and a handle. And I, I'm pretty happy with them. And they're not terribly expensive. They're not cheap, but they're not as expensive as like a Lions or Lista cabinet. The only drawer that I did not get from McMaster Car is this one, and this one I had to buy from Stackbin because McMaster Car doesn't stock it. However, um, I, I think they can special order it, but for whatever reason at the time they couldn't. And any, anyways, um, I was able to get it from Stackbin, and they took my credit card. And I don't know, they sold it to me, even though I'm not a reseller. That's a pretty good sized drawer. You know, I keep a crap load of collets and I don't know, just some miscellaneous junk in it. One thing I've never understood about band saws is they never come with like decent in-feed and out-feed tables, so you usually have to make your own. This one here actually came from McMaster Car. I, I think maybe I might only have like maybe 250 bucks in the whole thing. I don't know if it's even that expensive. Those legs are pretty cheap, and then the uh, roller conveyor was pretty inexpensive too. The only I've really made is, is when they come from the uh, factory, they only have that pissy screw there to support all the weight. And what I did is I added a piece of steel that presses and sticks in with some dowel pins to the bottom of it. And then I drilled and tapped a hole. And then I took a grade 5 bolt and then faced the head of it off to 
get rid of all the markings. And what this does is it kind of gives you like a positive shear all the way down, so this is actually supporting all the weight. The legs just stabilize it. This pissy screw isn't holding all the weight. And then also because you got a bolt down there, you get a real fine adjustment when you're trying to level the uh, conveyor to your to your saw. Eventually, I'm going to add a I'm going to add a drip tray to it. Now you see several of my benches actually have that really expensive uh, Kennedy square hole pegboard system, and the system's nice because it's got these uh, plastic locking clips. So that when you try to take an item off, the um, there you can see the clip right there. Um, when you take an item off, the uh, the clips don't come out of the pegboard. Problem is they're kind of expensive, and um, you know you have to order them. And I've got something that I been using lately that I like better that's a lot cheaper. This is the pegboard um, that's on my kind of maintenance workbench and it's just a regular standard pegboard. But I bought these handles and they have a screw that hold them in. So now you can pick stuff off of there and they don't come out. And I did get these from McMaster Car but I actually I think I saw them at my local hardware store. So I guess they're not as special as I thought they were but if you can't find them let me know and I'll give you the McMaster Car part numbers. This is something else I get a lot of comments about when people come to my shop and it's just a way of storing my miter saw and getting it up off the floor and out of the way. And it's actually made from a thing that you buy at a hardware store that's for hanging your bike, a bicycle from the ceiling. And I've just got, you know, a piece of uh, angle steel, a couple more pieces of angle steel, and some flat bar. And I just bought, uh, you know, some chain and some glass and some pulleys and stuff from the hardware store. <laughs> and um, kind of integrated it together and painted everything so it matches and um, we've got kind of a unique way to get my uh, miter saw up off the ground and you know so you can walk under it and all that kind of wonderful stuff. And this is how the thing gets lashed to the floor and it's a bit overkill piece of uh, angled steel I think it's like a three-quarter inch thick web and I think it's like an Oh, like a, I think it's like either 6x6 six six or 8x8. Eight eight. And um, the only reason I made it out of this is I just had this piece of angle steel just laying around. This is, a, um, this is another um, unit, and again, it just comes from a hardware store. It's a platform, and I had to make a, not real elaborate, but a steel frame to attach it to the roof in a commercial building because it's you know, meant for going in your garage. And um, I keep my racing lawnmower on it, and again, it just gets it up off the floor. And then the cabinet that's under it is actually in wheels, so you just roll it out of the way. And it's um, held to the ceiling, the steel frame's held to the ceiling just with some three-quarter ten all thread, which admittedly is way overkill. Everyone makes fun of me for it. I'm sure half thirteen or probably even five sixteenths eighteen probably would have been, you know, plenty strong enough. And this is something that I just fixed. I now have an operating door buzzer. And it's kind of a pain in the butt because I'm using just a regular doorbell for like your house. And all the magnetic switches that you find are wired normally closed. And so trying to like when the door shut, the bell rings, and then when you open it, it shuts off. And this one I was able to find from Granger, and you can wire it normally open or normally closed. And they're kind of expensive, they're about 35 bucks, but you know, I mean it works. And now, you know, when the door is closed, the bell doesn't ring, and when it's open, it rings. And this is the bell that I bought um, from a hardware store. I mean, it wasn't very expensive, um, and it's just kind of a, an obnoxious buzzer. It's a four-inch bell. 